Joy, thank you for sitting down with me today. Thank you for having me, Toby. Of course. So it's been a little over a year since you returned home to APPA and assumed the role of president and CEO. Can you tell me a little bit about what that meant to you personally and professionally? It means an incredible amount to me because um, I actually came here for my first tenure at APPA 20 years ago exactly, February of 2001. So coming back after leaving for four years, still representing public power, but in a different way, coming back into sort of my, my bread and butter to um, community-owned power, uh, not-for-profit, providing an essential service to your communities every day, I, it just it meant a, a ton to me. Uh, and personally, uh, just being able to keep doing what I love, running a trade association, but doing it for public power was an incredible feeling. So you obviously came into this role with some goals for helping APPA kind of get to the next level. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about those goals and you know, with the backdrop of the pandemic, how they may have shifted during the first 100 days or so? Yeah, yeah so, so the pandemic started about two months in, so about 60 days into my first 100 days. A part of the interview process was to have a 100-day plan. And I came back in with a goal of staying put for the first 100 days or so to really uh, delve into the culture here at APPA and make sure we had a very tight environment where we were collaborating well, where we were trusting each other, holding each other accountable, and being transparent in our interactions. So we decided on the moniker of TACT to represent that. It's really about creating a, a, a next level of teamwork so that we could really support our members most optim optimally. So that stayed during the pandemic, but certainly there were some adjustments we had to make to that. Also, we added in um, an increased focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion, which APPA had been doing previously, but certainly with the events last year, we wanted to highlight for the staff, but also bring some additional resources into our members. So that tact culture, we're still a work in progress, honestly, but it's really meant to help us provide our members the most optimal service um, do the most with their dues dollars and with the other dollars they are spending in some of our other programs. That's great. So, so was there a moment in March or April where you knew that the organization was going to have to kind of make a hard pivot to dedicate time and resources to the pandemic response? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty early on. I mean, probably as soon as we closed our office based on our local and state guidelines. Um, and, and when that happened, I knew it was going to be pretty significant. I don't know that we knew, I knew at that point it was going to last throughout the year, but I knew we were going to have to make some decisions about our engineering and operations conference and rodeo that were happening in April. Um, also, you know, just making sure we had business continuity with regard to our IT that worked well. Um, but you know, that, that was pretty early on. And then the, the year long or year long plus significance, probably I started to recognize around May, I would say. The nice part, part of that 100-day activity was I had the staff do what I call programmatic assessments. So assessing all of our programs, making sure we were uh, creating efficiencies within our programs, assessing our programs to see if they were still the right ones for our members. So we were able to use that data as we went through the year to make sure, again, we were managing our expenses our, because our revenues were down, frankly, from our meetings uh, because for obvious reasons and we needed to manage that piece. So the assessments really helped in the short term and will also help in the longer term as we continue to evolve. Sure. So, so what have been some of the highlights of the year in terms of APPA's accomplishments or service to members? Oh my gosh, uh, you know, the silver lining, if there is one in the pandemic, and I, you know, we always have to find that, right? I and mean, we can't, I, we would never want it. We would never want the loss of life or the suffering that's happened but I will say from, from a silver lining for, for APPA, it was our members responded, you all responded incredibly well. I'm, I'm speaking to the members now. Um, just seeing that, seeing that response, seeing the, the lights stay on, seeing the essential workers being willing to come to work every day to keep the lights on for their communities, uh, working with our brethren in the rural electric cooperative world, investor and utility world, um, and, and working as an industry together to help respond coming together around a resource guide that we all pulled together around as an industry and that public power actually had an outside role in. We had 85 public power professionals from across the country help us develop that resource guide for COVID-19 response that was used across the industry. 
also when we got into storm season, we knew we had to plan for mutual aid response and we saw um, kind of a test case around that in April when there was a tornado in uh, Chattanooga. And we saw people come in from different states, but there were, you know, there were a lot of unknowns at that point, as, as you can recall. But they were able to mitigate the spread of the virus that went very well, a lot of community support for that. But when we were looking at the, the hurricane season and how that would work, the industry came together around that quite heavily and we had no idea it was going to be such a significant storm season. I think if there wasn't a pandemic and a presidential election, we would have heard a lot about this storm season. It was almost as, as bad, if not worse in some ways than the 2005 storm season. And our members responded beautifully, as did the rest of the industry, um, to, a, to very significant storms and damage in certain communities. So to be able to do that in the middle of the pandemic, keep workers safe, go across state lines, all of that is just hugely significant. And we, as, as the staff here, we were able to play our role, and I'm very proud of the staff for the work, the, the long hours that they put in to help our members in that response operationally, but also to pivot to virtual educational uh, sessions, to virtual conferences very quickly, um, with kind of without missing a beat, but there was a lot of work behind that. So across the board, APPA staff performed really well on your behalf, and I'm also really proud of that. Excellent. So what are you looking forward to the most in uh, to 2021 here? Oh, well, aren't we all looking forward to being past the pandemic whenever that, you know, all the vaccines get rolled out and um, we're still working on kind of that essential worker piece and making sure vaccines get to our, our member utilities, essential staff. Um, but once that's passed, yeah, I look back to getting, I look forward to getting back to in-person events um, and, and looking forward to our national conference, at least having a hybrid uh, event there. So people who can and want to come in person can. I think that'll be the first foray and it'll be so exciting to see you guys in person. Um, so that's, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to continuing to work on our culture here internally, as well as to kind of continue to refine some of our programs and experiences for you all, especially as we keep moving into the future as the electric utility sector writ large, as well as public power. There's a lot of exciting things going on in our industry. And, um, you know, it's a transitional time, so that brings some trepidation too. But I think if we sort of tackle it together, we're gonna come out on top because we're positioned really well as public power to meet these challenges as we've met this incredible challenge of the pandemic. So anything else that uh, members should be on the lookout for here in the near term? Well, just again, keep, keep on the lookout for some additional information about national conference. We're also, we do have uh, our virtual, some virtual conferences coming up. Our joint action workshop is coming up here uh, next week. Uh, we also have, um, you know, a really exciting launch of our Public Power Current, which is Public Power Daily. We have changed it to a three-day week format, really to acknowledge that that's really when our readership happens, as well as to try to provide some additional content that we that we think is going to be really exciting. And that was part of that assessment from last year as well. So I hope you guys are uh, enjoy it. We love your feedback. And, um, and then, you know, looking forward to some of those additional meetings, the Joint Action Conference, the Virtual Engineering and Operations Conference, and seeing you guys at National Conference in June. Thanks for your time, Joy. Thank you.